Oh yeah. Let's start making some holes in this thing, man. Hey YouTube family, this is Robert with Coastal GX. We are out here in McAllen, Texas at Truck Toys where we're gonna be installing a couple of mods on my 2012 Lexus GX460 Sandy. One of them, one of those mods is this snorkel right here from Iron Man. And the other one is gonna be kind of like a makeshift little uh, kit that we put together for the rear differential so that it can go ahead and breathe. But anyway, I'm not gonna delay these guys over here. I'm sure Justin and his team at Truck Toys are ready for us. So let's get Sandy in there. I've owned Sandy for a little over two years now and I've slowly been modifying her to my specific needs. Make sure you hang around to the end of the video where I explain my reasons for these specific modifications. I purchased the snorkel from Iron Man 4x4 America during one of their flash sales. I've bought several items from them at reasonable prices and they feel high quality. Justin owns truck toys and was gracious enough to tackle my project personally. The snorkel kit comes with everything you see here and the instructions are pretty clear. So the cool thing about this uh, installation guide from Iron Man is that all the steps, as you can see, everything is pretty clear. One by one, it tells you what you need to do here. So if you don't wanna hire a shop like I did, you wanna do it on your own. And I know some friends that have done this like my buddy Gabriel, he does a bunch of this stuff on his own. You can certainly go ahead and do it. template is for a Toyota Prado 150 which is the cousin of the Lexus GX 460 however there is a slight difference and they do warn you there is a slight difference on the fender here so just because it's for the Toyota Prado 150 doesn't mean that it was designed exactly for this one right here although it does fit it does work so we're gonna go with it Is it difficult to remove there, Justin? No, sir. How many bolts? Three bolts. Three bolts? No, sir. Little, little sandy? For sandy? Well, yeah, once we do the pilot holes, then you, they want a 5 8 hole. All the small holes, they want it at 5 8 0.63. 5 8 is 0.625.
Now the reason for removing that part under, as you can see is obvious now, you do need to remove this inner fender liner in order to be able to access the bolts from the inside. Justin reinstalled the airbox and made sure all the connections were tight. Now it was time to get to work on the rear differential breather. Was it hard to remove? No sir, it just comes right out. To all it is is just a little breather. And why, why is it important to uh, do this or to consider doing a rep uh, repositioning of these uh, things? On these trucks, if you look at the way this one is, yeah. see it doesn't have any, like normally like on the Super Duties and stuff, uh -huh. we'll have a, a line that runs up and we can tie it up above the frame yeah but on these trucks if you get it under the get the rear differential submerged under water yeah the water can still seep in through the bottom side and that'll get inside your rear dip and it just, it'll ruin your differential fluid the main part we're, we always are more concerned with is getting it inside the pumpkin the center section because mm -hmm. once you get that once you get water and stuff in there it'll just turn that fluid into like it'll look like chocolate milk and it's basically useless after that you don't ever want to have that stuff contaminated. Any other things to take into consideration aside from just getting a snorkel and getting a, the repositioning of these things? I mean, it's also the distributor cap, I guess, or? Yeah, occasionally, but I mean, for the most part, if you're in, you definitely want to try not to be that high underwater, in the, you know what I mean? Yeah, if, if you're you doing are in, a, in a situation where you have to be, you just, as long as you drive slow, try not to get a wave going, you know what I mean? It'll, it you won't be as bad. Yeah. Make sure when you route this line and, sh and stuff, that it doesn't, it's not going to get in a bind anywhere. So we want to send it from here, up through here, and over to the gas cap. Once the breather was replaced and the hose attached, it was time to run the line into the gas refill area. We made sure the line had enough length to allow articulation of the rear axle and Justin secured it with zip ties. Check it out. Comes right up in here. Boom. So there you go, guys. Another awesome install from Truck Toys. Justin and his team did a great job doing those two mods with that Iron Man snorkel and the relocation of that rear differential breather. So now that they did that, I wanna to explain to you why is it that I decided to do these two mods. This is, however, a purpose-built vehicle. It's custom made, it's right made for me. Now, let me tell you the reason I did it, aside from it looking so damn cool, cause yeah, that looks pretty cool to me. I love the way the snorkel looks. Kinda of looks like, reminds me of those vehicles in Australia. Reminds me of the South African vehicles. It's pretty neat, but it does serve a purpose. So the snorkel itself, yeah, a lot of people think it's just for traversing or fording high water, but it's actually meant to get some cleaner air when you're riding on a dusty trail and you're following other people. You want to get that. You want to you want to get that thing to suck in some fresh air from up here, right? Now, just because it's up here, it doesn't mean that you can go over water all the way up to here, right? I mean, so you do want to save that uh, uh, engine and you don't want any water to go in there. But uh, that's not the main purpose. The main purpose is to get some fresh air 
up in here. And of course, you got to think about other things. That's why the rear differential breather, as Justin was explaining, if the water, if you're going over high water and that water is above that differential breather, all right, it's going to shut down. There are some hot, hot uh, uh, gases in there. It's going to get really hot and it's going to want to suck in water from the axles. You're going to get water inside of your differential and that's going to ruin your rear diff. So you don't want to do that. Other two things that we didn't touch on, transmission and the front diff. The reason we didn't relocate or mess with those differential breathers, and they do exist, is because they're already pretty high up there. Now, I want you to take a look at this video. This video right here is my neighborhood. This is what happened last year during Hurricane Hannah. I learned a lesson, okay? Now, I, was th I gotta thank God because I did not get any flooding at my house, but the surrounding area was pretty nasty. And if I had to drive my vehicle through there or, you know, I just, for some reason, I have to, you know, get through some higher water, I don't wanna be stranded. And the best thing I can do is probably do these modifications that I did for it. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna be going into uh, salt water and going through anything over there, but uh, it will help in such a situation if I ever need to ford water in the future. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for the video. I wanna say a big thanks to my buddy, Lorenzo. He's the one that's been handling the camera. He did, he's a professional, so uh, I'm looking forward to this, editing this video, it's gonna be awesome. But anyway, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe right now. Thank you.